we just had Martin Luther King's Day recently. He got arrested. There was a method to his madness. And it wasn't madness. There was a method to his method, right? Um, he wanted to get arrested. He wanted it to be on TV because he was protesting laws and discrimination that was unjust. Mm-hmm. He has said, you know, he has said in many writings that he did what he did in the way that he did it, not merely because it was the morally right thing to do, but it was strategically thought out. And in retrospect, turns out those strategies were good. He wanted it to be on TV. He wanted the protesters to be hosed. He wanted those things to happen so all of America could see what the reality was. And he wanted to awaken what he called the silent majority of moderates. Yes. Right? Because he was smart. He knew you can't argue with racists. He knew you can't argue with extremists. You can't change them. What you can do is mobilize good people who just are quiet and want nothing to do with that. Civil disobedience. Civil disobedience for a, for a very practical uh, outcome. Yes, practical outcome. Very smart. Civil rights, yes. He was a little bit of a marketer for his cause. He used cynical means to achieve a noble goal. Now, that's a great example. Greta Thunberg protesting outside of a coal mine or marching down the street in Greece, which is a different country with different laws and a different legal system that has its own borders. That's not Romania, where the top G is being detained. I'm not sure I see what the projected or wanted outcome is of that. Mm. except for a bunch of very angry yayas in their windows screaming out, going, shut the fuck up, Malaka. I'm trying to sleep here. I'm trying to cook pastizio, and you're yelling free the top G in a different country. Yeah. But I do, I do think it's very interesting that around Martin Luther King Day, one of the greatest human beings that ever lived, right, in, in a lot of people's opinion, in my opinion, and I think history reinforces that one of the greatest human beings to live on the planet hands down hands down on the days where he on the day where we're celebrating his protests in america there's protests happening around the world to free andrew tate from the romanian legal system Mm -hmm. i'm trying to figure out what that means but I think what it means is that we've had a big loss of meaning. I think we've lost meaning. Mm-hmm. I think if you stopped a bunch of those kids in the street and go, what kind of change are you trying to enact in the world? And they would just go, oh, I didn't think of that. I just want to <laughs> free the top G. I just want this guy unleashed onto the internet again. Because he's freeing us from our own our own laziness. Finally, there's someone to say, hey, guy, you want to get healthier? Go to the gym. Hey, guy, stop thinking about how you feel all the time. Men sometimes do things they don't want to do. What happened to fathers? Where's a dad? Jared didn't need the top G. You don't need the top G to tell you to hit the gym. No, I don't. No, you had a girl. You needed just one more girl to reject you in high school because you were a fatty. Yes. <laughs> you needed one girl to say, I'm not into fatties. Yep. And then you, you fucking grab some beetroot and you grab some <laughs> ginger juice. You learned about turmeric and anti-inflammatory foods. Exactly. You stopped eating fried foods. You got thin, you got hot. Mm-hmm. And you threw a fucking Black Panther necklace around your neck and you hit these goddamn streets and you mind your own business and whatever fucking you're doing, you don't announce it. Because you're fucking old school, baby. And you had a dad in your life. Yes, I did. You know what's ironic about Andrew Tate to me? The things that he's arguing for is a Band-Aid on the things that a man like him inflicts. Instead of being out there yelling at a bunch of other people's kids about what they should do, everyone should be in their own home with their own kids, teaching them the lessons they learned on how to be a man. 
So those men who continue to go out there and bang a lot of broads and live that extended youth life into their 30s, into their 40s, were the same exact absentee fathers that caused this fucking problem. Yep. And now here's another one. He doesn't have any kids. But here's a guy who's 35, 36, 37, living the dream of a 15-year-old, driving fast race cars. <laughs> You know, living with swords, a sword cabinet, podcasting with his brother, living in a dorm room, banging Slovenian war, uh, war-torn war refugees who are just happy to have a job. And he's yelling at all these fatherless kids around the world of fathers who acted just like him. Is that a good point that hasn't been made? Yes, it is. And that's what you're here for. The top G should be yelling at guys who are like the top G. Yeah. <laughs> he should be going, don't be like me. Don't be like my dad. Yeah. Who left the family to go chase a chess dream. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was a CIA agent. I doubt it. I think the top G has alluded to the fact that his dad might have been in the CIA. 